So I've got an article for us. Ugh. So you know how they keep saying that they're going to make us no. live in pods and eat the bugs? Well, we're also going to, we're not even going to get to go outside for an hour in the sunlight because our nature walks are going to be in VR. Oh, yay. Time in nature is good for our mental health, but what about artificial nature, says some idiot on the ABC. I started to feel a bit like a... Someone has read Ready Player One and thinks, hey, this is the perfect future. And, um, and how are they going to manage to recreate the racism? <laughs> well, that's just because inherent, they, you know, clearly. <laughs> well, no, because we know we know the outdoors, we, we, we know the countryside is racist. We, that's been determined already. Well, we've, we've already established that walking in nature is a white people's thing, so by forcing black people to do it, that'll be the racism. Oh, right, well, okay, yeah, that's true. So, the idiots just say that, they, they do some waffle about thought experiments and then say, nature offers us a respite from the daily grind of routines and demands. The innate desire to connect with our natural environment is labelled biophilia hypothesis, a term put forward by sociobiologist Edward Wilson in 1984. Researchers found that spending time in natural settings is linked to reductions in stress, feelings of anger and fatigue, increases in happiness, otherwise known as positive mood, Fewer symptoms of depression in adulthood and reductions in symptoms of attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder in children. So time in nature does us good, but how? Don't really care. Now the crux of the article is, does virtual nature have the same effect? Well, we've evolved to respond positively to non-threatening natural settings. For our ancestors, these environments would have increased the chances of survival because they provided opportunities for reproduction, food and shelter. Our emotional response to stimuli, to stimuli we find aesthetically pleasing, like green spaces, tend to decrease arousal responses such as decrease in blood pressure and normal breathing pattern. This makes us feel relaxed and reduces stress levels. So the next step in understanding this link is, does virtual contact with nature mimic this positive effect? The answer is that experiences of nature don't have to take place in person. A study that brought together data from 32 previous studies reported that while people got the most psychological benefit from physical exposure to nature, exposure to simulated natural environments such as film or virtual reality had a comparable effect. Okay. But why though? It's not like there isn't outside. Well, when they replace all of the planet with massive concrete high-rises pods and you have to, and you work in your cubicle that is exactly one foot from your pod and doing god knows what being a wage slave you we won't have time to go outside because you'll be working a 16 hour do, day let's just go the whole matrix then why don't just do the whole matrix thing just pod people literal pod people connected to vr forever and ever that's, that's basically what they were researching that is, I mean, that is better than this shit. Oh, well, and then they use it as an excuse to wank off about climate change. Yeah. But basically, it's live in the pod, eat the, the eat the bugs, and enjoy nature entirely through artificial means. No. No Pretty way much. Blue Streamer says this is the end goal of the green movement, keeping people out of nature. Okay, so next up, speaking of the New World Order, and how it... Yeah? Just for playing a video for chat. Yeah. The bad news... 
at Davos a few years ago, you know, the Edelman survey showed us that the good news is the elite across the world trust each other more and more. So we can come together and design and do beautiful things together. The bad news is that in every single country they were polling, the majority of people trusted that elite less. So we can lead, but... So the video says that the good news is the elite in the world trust each other. The bad news is the people in the countries don't trust the elite. And this is bad because reasons. Huh. Should try to be more trustworthy then. Yes, clearly. Yep, as Prime Knight says, literally the cabal. But of course, Reuters fact check says, despite repeated misinformation being shared online about the Great Reset, this sustainability plan proposed by the World Economic Forum is not a secret plot to end private property or create a totalitarian state. Don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> about that. I don't like it. Reuters partners with the World Economic Forum for exclusive content distribution on Reuters Connect. January 25th, 2021. Sorry, what was that, Reuters? I have no idea. Content from the Davos Agenda will be exclusively available to Reuters News Agency customers via Reuters Connect. The Davos Agenda, being held 25th to 29th of January, is a virtual event hosted by the World Economic Forum, going the world's foremost leaders to address the economic, environmental, social and technological challenges accelerated by the COVID-19 pandemic. But there is totally not a group of elites seeking to control the world. No, not at all. I don't hear it at all. This is just regular grassroots folks. Exactly. That's regular grassroots. As Buster and Deepin says, it's not a secret, it's in the open. And yet people still can't fucking see it. Like when the health officer in, from New South Wales came straight out and said that in the like, New World Order will do whatever the fuck we feel like. But they also don't exist. Yes. There is no New World Order, despite the fact that they keep talking about it. It's the same with the Great Reset. Like, they started talking about the Great Reset. And then other people were like, what's this Great Reset thing? What are they talking about? And they're like, a Great Reset's a conspiracy theory and it doesn't exist. And it's like, but we're reading your freaking headlines. Yeah, literally. <laughs> you said it first. We're just asking what it is. It's a conspiracy theory. Okay, but what's this over here then? Never mind that. It's a conspiracy theory. It doesn't exist. By the way, the Great Reset's going to be awesome. Yes. <laughs> so, to the mental gymnastics of these fuckers. Yep, yeah, and of course, from Russia to die, because apparently that's the only place you can get honest fucking news, except for oh. supplies, for example, if it's about Russia or the Ukraine. <laughs> Australians shocked after New South Wales health officer says post lockdown Sydney will be a new world order. Our exposure sites still will they be put back in place to be listed once we are reopening because they're not at the moment. Um, we will be looking at what contact tracing looks like in the new world order. Yep, what contact tracing looks like in the new world order. And then, of course, idiots are like, you showing pictures? Uh, I pull out a video. Oh, okay. And then, of course, other health officers are referencing the New World Order again and again and again. But no, no, it doesn't exist. It's totally a conspiracy. There's no such thing as the New World Order, despite the fact that national leaders keep saying it. 
But then when we say it, it's like, oh my god, you're conspiracy theorists. It's like, no, I'm just reading the thing you said. You literally said that it's a new <laughs> world order. Like, what the hell do you expect us to take away from that? Yeah, but you said it like it was a bad thing. Yes. Clearly, that is the problem. It is. I mean, literally, though. <laughs> <laughs> You can't wonder in a, in a sort of situation of New World Order exactly how much influence Australia would have. Well, because obviously, you know, people fuck only off. really. Li well, I mean, historically, people have only listened to Australia because it's sort of transgently, you know, Britain, isn't it? So. I suppose it depends how compliant it is. Well, it'll be very compliant. Why would anyone listen to them? <laughs> Like, if they happen to say anything off narrative, they'll get, uh, nobody will listen. If they're repeating the narrative, then they'll be the best thing ever. Uh, Australia's not going to be a big partner in the New World Order. They... <laughs> when it's New World Order and things that, from the economic forums and stuff mm. like that, they sort of work on the basis that the military would simply go along with what they've got to say and not just kill them all. Yeah, that, well, that's why they're getting rid of all the competent soldiers. Why do you think? Why do you think they're having fucking all gay helicopter crews and pronouns in the mil navy and air force? It's like they can just make the military yeah. useless at actually being a military. Yeah, but the really competent military people aren't involved in any of those things. <laughs> The scary military people just have computer terminals. <laughs> uh, it's absolutely ludicrous. <laughs> Billy Blogs asks, wait, doesn't Australia have loads of uranium? I'm sorry to... Uh... Fall asleep in the middle of a sentence. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt again, but uh, I gotta go, guys. Yeah, no worries, man. Nah, yeah. it's still lag being a bitch again. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all good, man. It was good to have you. Though. I gotta good drop to... out. Uh, I gotta get some food before they close the mess hall. And then... Um... <laughs> He's talking over YouTube because of his fucking internet. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have, have a wonderful day, guys. Time. I'll talk to you later. See you, man. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Uh, yes, Australia does have all sorts of, lots of uranium. Problem is, for some reason, the Australian government's scared of the word nuclear. They don't like nuclear, either. <laughs> Instead, we just give our uranium to the Chinese. Because our dipshit politicians think that they are going to survive the invasion. <laughs> Recently Name says what they're doing to the military is also a humiliation ritual. Yep. And Chrissy says no pedos and trim is out. Trim is out. Yep. Poor boat chef. Yeah. Poor man. I need to keep a, I need to keep some stories on the side for him when he shows up so he can just... <laughs> as soon as he shows up, it's like right. Pull the black pills out. He's like, no. <laughs> well, I was suggesting doing it the other way because he seems to arrive just in time for black pills at the moment. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we can ensure it. <laughs> he gets the most animated when you give him the black pills. <laughs> yeah, but then he tends to do stupid things like drop a boat on his head. <laughs> no, I think he did that before the black pill last time, didn't he? Uh, I blame it on the week before. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I hope you enjoyed this segment from the Sultans of Chardelay podcast. If you like this segment, please click like, comment, and subscribe. Also, check out the full podcast in the description below.